Welcome to the Learn to Quilt Intermediate Series from Shabby Fabrics. I'm Jennifer Bosworth. I'll be your instructor throughout the series, and I'm hoping you've already went through the beginner series, which is now available on YouTube for you to watch 24-7. If you didn't, don't worry. Just subscribe to our channel while you're there. Go ahead and go all the way through the basic series. We do have kits available as well. If you'd like us to supply you with the fabric, of course, you can use your own fabric the patterns and all the measurements and additional tips and tricks are available as a download you can click on the link below our videos there's a description box and most of everything you're going to need is in that but you can also go to our home page of the shabby fabrics website at the very very bottom there's a navigation bar on the bottom and one of the links is free downloads click there you'll see the learn to quilt beginner series this series as well as literally hundreds of other videos that you can watch everything from quilting to diy so i really encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to the youtube channel and also subscribe to our e-newsletter we're coming out with new products all the time of course sales and coupons too are always exciting to learn about be the first to learn about those things this is the strawberry smoothie this is the first block of the intermediate series now i'll be building on the vocabulary and knowledge you learned in the basic series again if you don't have that knowledge and that vocabulary, you'll need that. I'm going to be making the assumption that you know what I'm talking about to a certain point and anything new I'll be teaching you. Um, I'll be adding some tools. We have three new uh, rulers that I absolutely love. Two of them we'll be using right now and we'll be using the mini one along the way. And with the ruler set, by the way, there's three new rulers. There's the uh, simple 7 8 inch ruler there's the ultimate flying geese ruler which we'll be using a little bit later and also the six and a half by twelve and a half creative grid ruler i love that and when you buy the ruler trio you also get the two and a half by six and a half inch ruler and i know when i'm on quilt retreats or working with small projects i really love the smaller rulers this is free when you get the ruler trio but we'll be i'll be showing you more about the utility of these in this particular block but the first thing i want to show you is just how the block looks uh, just by itself and I'll also be pointing out we didn't emphasize this as much in the beginning series but this is going to be coming into a, more of a play here as the blocks are a little bit more complicated pressing is going to be more of something I'm going to emphasize throughout the whole series the other thing I want to mention is sizing this is something that I've now come to as an early quilter I didn't use sizing and now I've learned about the benefit of it I like to add sizing to a lot of my fabrics because it just gives a little more body and it seems like my blocks come out more accurately. Not only the points come out more accurately, but they come out to the proper size. So I really love the sizing. Consequently, we did not pre-wash our fabrics. I get asked that question a lot. If you want to pre-wash your fabrics, by all means do it. Of course, you'll need to press them and then you can add the sizing at that point but I don't feel that that is necessary and we didn't pre-wash our fabrics here. So let's get started on how to make the strawberry smoothie block. It's really very straightforward. If you look at the block itself, you'll be making four of this part of the block. Those will be in the four corners. And then this portion of the block here is in those four sides and then you have a center square very straightforward those measurements are in the download that's why you do need to each time the video is released which will be on saturday mornings at 9 a.m pacific you do want to go ahead and get that download because that's what's going to tell you the measurements it's going to tell you do i cut this fabric once do i cut this fabric twice and how do i go about that so don't worry about writing down any measurements i went ahead and just tagged some of the fabric that is in here and we're going to use a design layout board and this is a fabric this is a flannel covered board we get foam foam core on the back and we simply cover it with flannel you'll see me build the block with you on this and you'll see why it's beneficial so let's just jump into it there's a couple measurements of course for each of these things to be cut to again that's on the download so i won't go over that but i want to show you how we use the rulers and why the simple 7 8 ruler in particular I love. If you've ever, of course you've quilted, that's why you're in the intermediate series, right? You've probably had to cut 7 8 inch before, maybe 1 and 7 8 4 and 7 8 It's not necessarily a comfortable measurement, and it's not easy to pick out on your ruler. 
For that reason, Creative Grids came out with a simple 7 8 ruler, and I love that. So let's take a look at that. I think you can see that kind of, let me bring in some red fabric. It might be a little, little bit easier. Normally you're used to seeing that be a one. Notice on this ruler, that's a seven eighths, a one and seven eighths, two and so on. This ruler is five and seven eighths inch wide. Now this particular fabric, I need to cut to four and seven eighths inch. So let's go ahead and that, that is my fabric right here. There's several of these, four and seven eighths, all of those right there. Let's see, we've already cut that to the four and seven eighths inch. It looks like we've cut it that way, but let me cut it this way. This is what I love about this. Four and seven eighths inch. All I have to do is literally, I'm not even, notice I'm not even lining up with my grid right now on my mat. I've squared my fabric up. In fact, let's do this again. Let's just assume that I hadn't squared that up. Let me take you to that point because you grab a piece of fabric out of your kit or out of your stash. And a lot of times you want to square that up. So in this instance, I do line up with the lines on my mat as a base, as a starting place. And once I square up, now I'm onto my ruler as my guide. So I'm gonna make sure I'm nicely lined up. I have a nice clean cut. Let me just move that out of the way real quick. Now I don't have to try to fish around. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. This is a standard ruler where the first measurement is one. If I was gonna find four and seven eighths, I literally need to kind of, it's right in that little, it's that little line right there. And it's hard to pick out. I like rulers that make my life easier, more accurate and fun. And this ruler accomplishes all of that. So we're gonna move over to four and seven eighths. I will simply, I'll even just, I won't even be in line with my mat. I'm gonna deliberately be this way. So you can see right now, my entire guidance is off of this ruler. And I'm gonna come line up four and seven eighths and simply make my cut. That's all there is to it. With this particular four and seven eighths inch cuts on this block, we're simply cutting diagonal to diagonal. No, nothing you haven't already done before. And then you have your pieces. And that's what we have right here. Notice I'll just separate those so you can see how that happens. Now with the, this part here, five and a quarter, of course, the 7 8 inch ruler doesn't make sense anymore. Let's put that aside. We will definitely be using that 7 8 inch ruler a lot more in the blocks coming up. It's a ruler now that I am definitely adding to my quilt stash, my quilting tool chest. And as a, if you've watched any of my videos, I don't have a lot of notions. I, <laughs> you could go broke literally buying notions. There's walls of notions when you walk into these quilt shops and Joann's and all these other places. I'm gonna buy notions that really do add value to what I'm doing, accuracy, precision, and save me time. I'm only going to be showing you notions that I feel are truly worth their money, and you will be using them again and again. So I ask you for your trust in that. I'm not gonna promote a product that I don't truly believe in. I'm always gonna give you things that I've tried, used, and really just love. Five and a quarter inch. How? Let me show you this one right here. That's right here five and a quarter inches. Now I'm going to go ahead and just get my square using my six and a half by 12 and a half inch ruler. Again, I'm just lining up on my mat. I've got this here and I'm going to clip that off and have a nice clean edge to start with. And I'll come over to my five and a quarter. There's my five, there's my quarter. Love how easy it is to pick that out. Now with this particular cut, see how it's cut twice on the diagonal. I wanna point out something to you right now. Just like I cut that previous red fabric, I can absolutely cut here, but what happens when I wanna cut on the other diagonal? How do you do it? Do you come over here, which is a little awkward. You kind of, it's just a very awkward thing. Or do I come here and cut this way, which is always dangerous. Don't cut toward yourself. I have absolutely been totally guilty of doing that before I bought a spinning mat. Let me tell you why I bought the spinning mat. Precision, accuracy, safety. Those are all great words. And I think you'd agree that <clears throat> not cutting toward yourself is a really good idea. So let's just move a few things out of the way. 
I love this uh, Ulfa spinning mat. This is available in two sizes. This is the 12 inch and we also have, I believe it's a 17 or 18 inch that I'll be using later um, in other videos, not in this series, but in other videos that, because sometimes your block is bigger than 12 and now what? And so for that reason, Ulfa responded to customer's request and made larger one. <clears throat> With this one, I'm gonna cut. This is why this will increase the safety. I'm not going to move my fabric. I'm not gonna move my body and cut in an awkward direction that compromises my safety. I'm simply gonna turn that fabric to where I'm in a more natural cutting position again and make my cut. And now I have my four cuts here. So, or my four pieces out of two cuts. Needless to say, if you don't have the Ulfa spinning mat, you're going to see me using that a lot more in the series and lots of videos you're seeing. This is something you're going to use over and over again. So if you're going to make an investment in your uh, adding to your sewing and, and uh, quilting um, notions, this is absolutely worth its weight in gold. Um, now we talked about the flannel design board. One of the things I used to do as an early quilter is I would just, I would just go to the sewing machine and start sewing. I didn't want to take the time. I guess maybe I was impatient or I just wanted to get going. I didn't lay out my block in front of me and make sure everything was laid out properly. Everything was cut properly, but we're going to do that now. This is a video that will follow on to this series. Um, and you can, it's the flannel, flannel design bar, I think is what we're calling it. Very inexpensive, simple to make. And I, we use multiple ones. We're simply going to take our pieces and we'll build our block. And we do this every single time we get ready to put something together. And that way we make sure that we've done it properly. So I'm just mimicking the very block that I'm looking at. And of course, you're going to have a picture. So you're going to be able to see what we're doing. These are the two and a half inch squares in the corner. This is our center. So you might have to bring things in a little bit. I should have started there, huh? Then I would have known how big this thing was going to be. So let's just refer to that. The other thing I love about the flannel design board is it's grabby. When I lift this thing up, here, I'll just put this down, show you what I'm talking about. Things don't fall off. Even if I shake this thing, they don't fall off. There's just something about flannel that's very kind of grabby. And I love that, that I can go to the, I can have my window open in my sewing room if I have that open that day and uh, things aren't gonna blow away. So we'll just keep building that. I'll put that block up here so we can see it together. Okay, we have our block all laid out now. And does it look like the picture? You'll of course have that in your download. You'll see a color picture of that and you wanna make sure everything looks exactly right. And that looks right to me. We're going to start, I'll show you how to put this section together and this section together. And of course, you're making four of those, four of those, and you have your center. That's really all there is to making this block. We'll start here, and those will simply go right sides together. And let's go sew our quarter inch seam allowance. We'll set our seam. We'll do a little cleanup over here. So you sizing, just do it every time, especially with bias, which will be coming up in future blocks. Anything is, that's cut on the diagonal like we've done today, it's especially important. This time, I know it feels a little weird, we're gonna actually press toward the red. One of the things that, that I didn't regard when I was an early quilter is I press the seams eh, this way one time, this way the next time, and my blocks really didn't lay as flat as they could, and therefore when my quilt was assembled, it kind of had these little peaks in these valleys, and I was just happy to have a quilt together. But as I progress in my skills, I now pay more attention to the seam allowances and make sure that I'm pressing them 
in a way that the block will lie as flat as possible. So I will definitely be addressing that throughout this um, entire series of pressing direction. I like to put everything back in place and make sure that um, I, I'm, I'm sewing the right pieces to the right pieces. Now on this one, we will come here and once again, we will sew a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm, I don't wanna start at the tip here. Watch how I'm going to flip this over and I'm gonna sew on the side of the red, red side. I don't like starting with the tip because sometimes it kind of tends to dive down in the feed dogs and get kind of eaten up by the sewing machine. So last time we sew the other side on, oh, I'm gonna use my Kai scissors. Oh, I love these scissors, by the way. This is something else I was recently introduced to. I was like, oh, scissors, they're all the same. Um, not even close. These Kai scissors are fabulously sharp. Be very careful. The first time I use them, I cut them, or cut myself. Um, I love to cut fabric with them. If it's just thread, that's one thing, but if I'm actually cutting fabric, I wanna use something nice and sharp. It's not gonna cause my fabric to fray. But when we sew the other uh, white triangle on, we press toward the red. This time we'll be pressing toward the white, and you can see why. If I press toward the red again, look at this bulk right here. That would be literally six layers, creating the kind of almost like a bump right there. By pressing toward the white, I'm evenly distributing the seam allowances so that it lies nice and flat. Now, so I've got that and I wanna make sure, does that fit right over top of that? I think for the most part, it does. It's definitely, by, by my standards, within, within tolerance, and I'll simply go right sides together, lining up tip to tip, and this is where using a pin or two, I would recommend that. This is my magnetic pin cushion. This is part of our basic notions uh, kit. I love these. I'm a complete klutz in my sewing room. True confession. Um, I used to have one of those, uh, you know, I'd buy a box of pins and just leave it in the box. And invariably I'd push my fabric and it would fall over. And then I would have to hope to pick them all up. What I love about this, is I can put my pins down, run this over, and it picks everything up beautifully. So definitely think a magnetic pin cushion is also worth its weight in gold. I'm gonna pin just because I want those points to stay together. Let's go ahead and take that to the sewing machine. So a quarter inch seam. Now we'll press to the dark this time. The reason is, look at all my bulk over here. I don't wanna press more stuff, so I'm gonna go ahead and pr press away from all of that confluence of fabric coming together. Press a little bit from the back, and then I wanna to come to the front. Because it's very easy to almost take a little tuck, I've done that many times before, and I don't wanna do that and we'll press that nice and flat. So that's our corner and you'll make four of those. Very straightforward. And we'll put that back into position and ready to go. That's our four. Here, very straightforward again, we'll go ahead and we will go right sides together. I'm gonna grab this very carefully. I have done this before. In fact, let me point out what I'm talking about. I'll bring this closer. I have done this before where I went right sides together. I turned and took it to my sewing machine and sewed the wrong side. For that reason, I now am very careful of saying, okay, I'm gonna go right sides together. I don't really wanna start at a point because again, like I said, sometimes that tip dives down in my feed dogs. I wanna start here. 
I'm going to pinch that together and turn it and bring it to my sewing machine. So I sew the proper place, this proper side. Pretty sure we pressed the dark on this one. Let me double check, we sure did. And press to the dark. Flip, press from the front. I'm gonna use my Kai scissors to go ahead and trim off that fabric. And let's make sure this they fit one on top of another, and they do. Let's go ahead and sew this together. It's just like we did on the other side, but let's just do this together. And you'll make four of these units. I was tempted to just now go run over to my sewing machine. You know what? I forget. Sometimes I'm still tempted to not pin. And you know what I do when I don't pin? I seam rip. I do that still because we think, ah, I've been doing this forever. And well, not, not quite forever, but I still, I still am tempted sometimes to not pin. And that little voice says, you know you should pin because otherwise you're going to seam rip. And that is very true. So take the time and let's go to the sewing machine. I don't sew over my pins. I've asked that sometimes. I, I'm always worried about one breaking and going down into my machine. Some people do sew over their pins. I just, I just don't. And we're going to press to the dark again. Back to the front, press. We'll make four of those units. Put them back on the flannel design board each time. It makes you, and you do that visual check. You keep looking at your picture of that, of your, and did I sew that? You know, is that one now up here and not, <laughs> and these are reversed. You want to check as you go versus putting your whole block together and then realizing you've made a mistake. Okay, you'll make four of those and you have your center. Just like we did in the beginner series. Now you'll sew the top row, the middle row, and the bottom row. For the top row, we sewed everything together and we pressed our seams open. Same for the bottom row. For the middle row, we went ahead and pressed toward the white. And then when you're sewing the three rows together, we press those seams open. So that's all there is to making the strawberry smoothie block. I'll see you soon when we make the pink block together.